Hi, I'm Kate Baxter, IPA's National Diversity Manager, and we're here today to talk about some really interesting topics. Topics that are close to my heart and topics that call out gender bias and inequality, not just at work, but in our community. I'm a mum of three young children, and I'm taking the challenge to help pave the way for our next generation through education and conversation. The theme for International Women's Day is to choose to challenge and I'm thrilled to see so many of you all here today to partake in these discussions and to take the challenge and to celebrate women. Thank you. It's my great pleasure to welcome my friend Corinne Hall. Best known for her batting accomplishments, playing for Women's National Cricket League for Tasmanian Wirral and Women's Big Bash League for the Hobart Hurricanes. Corinne has paved her way through sport. Her talents were quickly noticed when she won the 2004-2005 Cricket New South Wales Female Rising Star Award and at the ripe old age of 30 was named Hobart Hurricanes captain for the WBBL. Corinne is also co-author and illustrator of Victress, a book that highlights and celebrates women in sport. Corinne takes the reader down a path that is not only inspirational, but invokes feelings of immense pride for what Australian women athletes have achieved. A must read for Australia's youth, showcasing you can be whatever or whoever you do want to be. A genuine person who believes in the goodness of people, a lover of art, elephant conservation and travelling. I welcome Corinne Hall. Thanks for having me, Kate. That's an amazing intro. I hope I can live up to that. Corinne, what I loved so much about Victress was your overarching themes of success. These aligned incredibly closely with IPA's own values. That of love your work, take the lead, be the difference and own it. I'm keen to explore this more and we'll be basing a lot of our conversations around these values today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Victress for me was a, a personal passion project. Um, it was, we're going through a big bash season. We weren't performing the way we should be. And as a senior player, I should have been, um, you know, leading the way with that. And I wasn't. And after one game, I was getting quite down on myself. And um, I remember my mindset quickly shifted. And I felt this overwhelming sense of gratitude for being able to play the sport I love as my job. And it got me thinking about all the women who had paved the way before me and allowed me to have that opportunity that I had today. And um, I started drawing Dawn Fraser, who I think is the matriarch of Australian women's sport. And then I wrote down a hundred other athletes, female athletes that I wanted to draw. Um, my manager and my best friend got wind of what I was doing and they had the blue sky idea of getting the book published or getting the art published. And uh, we aligned ourselves with Cricket Australia, who's so the publishing, and, and Victress is what she is today. Let's talk about leadership. There is a common theme with the 100 women you've highlighted in Victress book, and that is leadership. How have you gotten to this stage in your career, and who have you learned from? I guess uh, for me, I'm a, a shy, quite introverted person, and I never had ambitions to um, take on a leadership role, but my coach saw qualities in me that I guess made people follow me. Um, so I think the challenge for me was trusting that, that she saw those qualities and that I could be a strong leader, even though I um, myself probably don't have the stereotypical qualities you'd think of a strong leader. Uh, I'm probably the opposite, but I think we've seen um, leadership redefined, um, not just through the sporting field, but through people like Jacinda Ardern, who are, uh, are showing you can be um, an effective um, leader who creates a lot of change. Um, Pay equality continues to be a subject that plagues women in work. Data shows us Australia's national gender pay gap is at 14%, meaning across all industries and occupations in Australia, men's average weekly earnings is 14% grander than women's. So Corinne, how has this pay equality affected you and your teammates? Yeah, I think um, I've been fortunate enough to see the full professionalism of, of women's cricket. Um, when I first started, we were selling raffle tickets to pay for our own travel and track suits. And, and now we're at a point where we can support ourselves to a point. Um, but we're still considered now full-time athletes. We train all year round. We have a couple of months off each year. Uh, and we only get paid at a probably a casual to a, at best part-time rate. Um, so there is a huge way to go. I think Cricket Australia has set the, the standard in um, the way they're treating their international athletes. So the women's, Australian women's cricket team get paid very well now. Um, and now their focus is to transfer that down to domestic female cricketers. So we don't have to have a job to supplement our income throughout the year and we can fully focus on being the best cricketer we can be. Creating space and opportunities for women in sports continues to be a big subject. This is true in the employment world as well. 
To give some context, there are nearly 50,000 CEOs or managing directors listed in Australia's census data. Of those 50,000 positions, only 19.3% of these are women, with most of the people aged between 40 and 60 being male. So Corinne, how do you encourage those to love your work when faced with daily bouts of discrimination? Yeah, this is a, a tough one, I think, because a lot of the time it's really ingrained in the, the organisation. I know um, in a, being in a male-dominated sport, we were always told we were never going to hit the ball as far or as hard because we didn't have the physical strength so no one would come and watch us play. Um, I think for me, uh, I was lucky I was in a team environment, so we, I had a group of people that I was surrounded with that had the same goal and the same purpose with the work that we were doing. We wanted to prove people wrong uh, and we wanted to work hard to earn that right as well. So I think surrounding yourself with people who um, are like-minded but challenge you as well but have the same purpose and the same goal in mind. Breaking into sport must have been a difficult ladder to climb. How did you get the confidence to really own that position and kickstart your career? Uh, I think for me, I've played um, state cricket for 11 years and it's only really the last three that I feel like I deserve um, to be playing with the people that I'm playing with and against. It's taken me a long time to find that inner belief and belief is a word that gets thrown around a lot, like you could just quickly nap it, but it takes a long time to, to achieve and I think it becomes um, easier when you start becoming aware of your own strengths um, and owning those. So I had some coaches that um, believed in me and what I could do. And uh, I don't play uh, the way that a lot of cricketers play. I play a lot of different shots. And a lot of the, a lot of the time those were frowned upon because they weren't traditional and, and they weren't um, low risk shots. And um, I guess people were trying to mold me into someone that I wasn't. In the last three years, I've had a coaching team who have allowed me to be myself and play the way um, I feel most confident in doing. So I think that's been massive for me to have this well of um, encouragement and belief around me that um, I know just through training and, and constant practice of that, it's become way more natural. Mm -hmm.